Evo in slide 47 here. So actually, slight delay on Tear Maker. It's going to happen. Trust me, it is. The podcasts are happening. I just, you know, of course, trying to get everyone on the exact same schedule and everything can be a pain in the butt, but I'm doing my best and we're going to make it happen. We're doing all of them that you've seen within the previous short. But for this, I wanted to quickly go over and get us all kind of on the same page for Tear Maker over the next coming month or so. So the rankings, as you can see here, we don't have an S through F situation here. I put in categories instead, and this is because I believe there's a lot of capable of random interpretations from everyone within the comment section alone to interpret S through F to mean different things. So I add categories in order to tighten it down so that then we all are talking on the same wavelength so we can actually have a organized maybe civil conversation in the comment section down below. So let's go through them and talk about them and also added, uh, added a change this year to kind of add a little spice to the tier 10. So uh, you'll be seeing that. So I wanted to explain that as well. Now let's get onto the rankings and such. We have meta here. Meta are defining ships for their category, whether or not it is a battleship, a light cruiser, heavy cruiser, or anything. These are amazing ships with very few flaws and just they just work in all situations they do they just are good period and if you end up losing them them it's just a it might just be a situation where the player decided got the better of you it happens but overall these ships will do well in so many situations and lead you to victories very often competitive here competitive are actually sometimes even meta ships but unfortunately there's just a better ship of that category meta shoves a lot of ships down into competitive but these competitive ships are still darn good. They do sometimes have issues, but those issues can be worked around and made useful in certain circumstances. So do not knock competitive ships any worse than meta. They just sometimes are, you know, second. That's just how, how it works sometimes. Niche. So niche, uh, it's one of the categories actually a lot of people will read too much into, but just understand these play the gambit. Sometimes these ships are good. Sometimes they are bad. It doesn't mean that they are good or bad ships. It just means that eh, depending on matchmaker, depending on how many people are playing that are good on the enemy team, depending on it's like what it's niche is or what it what it does in the game, maybe it's not needed. Other games, maybe that might be the key to victory. So just understand niche plays the gamut. Sometimes they're meta, sometimes they <laughs> need fixing and such. But niche overall is a fantastic category to be in. Doesn't mean they're bad at all. So if you want to play them, absolutely go right ahead playable this sounds worse than what it is but once again it's not the final category so playable these are ships that are good they're just okay they, they have their issues and there are clearly better ships above them but they're still just fine they're they could use some buffs but overall they don't need them either if that makes sense whereas need fixing yeah yeah um they need some work. <laughs> uh, some of them maybe even have received buff recently, but they're just not enough in the current meta and playstyle of players for them to be good, and I highly would suggest not touching them until they receive buffs. Now, this year, I actually added in a little bit of a challenging situation to think about here, because of course, sometimes ships change depending on what is put on them, whether or not it is just the regular equipment or potentially even legendary modules, commanders, legendary commanders, camos, and everything. So as you can see down here, we have multiple ships that have the label of tricked. Tricked basically means pit my right. They are tricked out to the extreme. For Regolo, it would be Palo added on. For Des Moines, it would be the camo. It would be the legendary commander. It would be the legendary module. For Goliath, it would be Jellico and such. Hopefully you're catching my drift, but these allow us to play a little bit of, okay, what is the base ship? How is it versus the tricked out version? If you throw a little bit of dough or maybe even you get lucky and you can get it in the shipyard or anything like that, does that change that ship fundamentally? I've added in them where I believe they actually do fundamentally change the position of the ship. As you can see, we have plenty of them in there. So just understand that if you see us say, hey, this ship is kind of meh, but then all of a sudden a tricked version is much better, then just go into the grind knowing exactly where the base versus tricked version is, whether or not you're going to be a free-to-play player.
or not. Okay, and that is the rankings and the tricked logo now explained. I'm gonna go back to my hidey hole and go review probably a few hundred more ships because yeah this is this takes a while and then also i'm going to be planning out times to meet up with everyone on the podcast thank you all for understanding the delay i'm really trying hard to make this happen for you all especially before the end of september as i will be taking another break around there as kind of i typically tend to but yep i'm going to get back to it get some schedules get some podcasts made i hope you all enjoy this season thank you all for the love and support and making this incredible crazy channel happen just thank you so much don't forget to like and subscribe to see whenever a new video goes live have a good one everyone peace